What is the most respectful way to respond to someone that doesn't believe in God? Thank you for the question. First of all, you have to pray for him and pray for yourself to have the wisdom in order to reply the best way. So when it comes to any, you know, dialogue with someone who does not believe in God, you need to have the wisdom of God. So you need to pray. Also, you need to pray for him because it's the grace of God, you know, working on his heart, on his mind, to understand, to believe. Um, the second step is to be reasonable. Don't say, like, there is God, I believe in God, and that's it. He wanted, like, he wants always to listen to some logic. So you have to have some reasons in your way. And also try to understand where he stands. Because if he is like, um, if he believes in God, that's different from someone who does not believe in God. If he believes in the Bible, that's different from someone who does not believe in the Bible. If he is an atheist, that's different from being, you know, um, skeptic or um, some other types of atheism. So when you understand where he stands, you can, you know, speak his language. Um, I think you may, if you face this situation many times, you need to study apologetics. You need to listen to some sermons, how to defend your faith, how to answer the common questions. Because sometimes we believe, but we do not know how to answer, how to reason for our faith, which is very much needed nowadays. Um, I pray all the time for God to change my heart, but I feel as if, as if he is not listening to me. How can I know that he is really there and listening to my prayer? Simply God promised that he is listening, that he loves his children. And he promised that he will answer the prayer, especially when you pray according to his will. So you are praying for that change of the heart, which goes with the will of God. Definitely he listened. But you know, sometimes you don't, f you don't feel the answer. Because the answer is deep in your heart, the work of the Holy Sp Spirit in your heart. There is kind of changing happening in your heart, but you may not feel it. It's like when you see a growing tree, you can never trace at which time the tree grew at, uh, this way. But there is real growth happening, but you cannot see it by your eyes. So the spiritual life, the spiritual growth is like a tree growing day after day, but you may not see it clearly by your eyes. So keep up, keep on praying and make sure that God is listening. You shouldn't believe in your heart and ignore the word of God. You should trust in the word of God, then you trust in your emotions. Your heart is telling you he is not there, he is not listening, but that's the word of your heart. Why don't you listen to him? He is saying the opposite. So the, the Bible said um, the heart is deceiving you. Sometimes heart, your heart is deceiving you. My teen age girl is giving her time to have good relation with God. She's very attached to social gathering, school events. Um, don't push it, please. As a mother, do not push your children, um, especially in their relationship with God. It has, it has to be very personal. Be a role model when your daughter look up to you seeing that you are enjoying your spiritual life you are really kind of a daughter of god and you will love to pray you love to read the bible so they will have it in their life one day but don't push it um, and also you you have to have some friendship relation with your child because in the teenage you know, they never accept many instructions and, you know, any kind of pushing. 
my parents are constantly saying no to so many things that I do not see anything wrong with. Birthday parties, school events. I know I won't do anything wrong, but how do I go about having my parents to trust in me? Thank you for the question. Um, simply being a parent, sometimes we are scared of the peer pressure. We trust in you, but sometimes we could see that the pressure coming from the surroundings is very tough. And although we trust you, but we do not trust the atmosphere. That's why we have to be cautious. And I think you need to respect your parents and respect their fears because they love you and they could see that the pressure may be stronger than your power. So uh, try to convince them, but yani, try to say harder for the So uh, I always advise the parents to listen to their children and give them space. But again, we have to be wise because the pressure is tough. How do we as servants encourage our children who are raised in this culture to appreciate our beautiful holy liturgy? I found it very important that we um, explain what's happening in the holy liturgy. And it's important to understand the words of the song, the hymns I mean, and the movements of abuna and deacons and what's behind the liturgy. So when they understand, they can enjoy. But, but when they just staying in the liturgy, they cannot follow the, the liturgy, they, they cannot enjoy it. Um, and also when you memorize the Coptic hymns, you can share and by sharing you feel like engaged in the, in the liturgy and enjoying the liturgy. Also, uh, it's all about the, the presence of God. So we love to pray the liturgy because we feel that Christ is here and we are talking to him and he's listening to us. So if you reach this level of, the, of feeling the presence of the Lord, you will enjoy the liturgy more. It's boring, too long. The, I, the topic of dating. Mm. <laughs> Simply, dating in the Christian view is different from dating in the American view. <laughs> because to date, some, to have some dating, it means that you are thinking of marrying someone. So you want to know him. You want to, um, to understand uh, his values, his dreams, his personality, to know some about his past, uh, his relations. So that's the idea of knowing, getting to know someone. So you are getting closer. But it had nothing to do with the sexual relation or physical touches and, and physical desires. That's not, that's not correct. Because that's not love even. When you love someone, you care for him and you respect the holy sacrament. Wedding in, in Christianity is not just two going together their way. It's the presence of God blessing their family, blessing their marital relationship. So when you think it this way, you have to take the blessing of the, of the Lord himself. So when you get to know someone, that's accepted. And also it has to be in an age, you know, reason, reasonable for taking a decision. So when you have some kind of a relationship with a girl or you have a, with a boy, in the high school, definitely that's not reasonable, that's not correct. Because you cannot marry anyone at this age. 
and you will have, you will, you know, experience many changes in your values, in your mind, in your personality in the coming years. So you cannot take a decision for life. So uh, better to control your emotions and think of marriage as a great decision in life you should respect. And don't leave, don't, you know, let go for your emotions to, to be given to us anyone at any time. Um, and do not see love as just enjoying minutes. Love is kind of a covenant. You, you give promise to the one you love that you will care forever and you, you have to be responsible. So you cannot make such decisions if you are not mature enough. Why are you orthodox? Because I believe so much in the apostolic traditional church. When you study the Bible, you would see, and you, when you study the, the history of the church, you will find out that our church, or the orthodox faith generally, is the, the very traditional Christian way in loving God and people. When you study the first four centuries, you will feel like we are living according to their, you know, um, ideas and practices till this minute. They were praying the liturgy, they were uh, having the sacraments like we have today, they, they respect the bishops and priests, they were facing persecution all the time. So actually, um, the, when you study the history, you'll find that we are the very normal extension of the early church, the apostolic, holy, one church. So being orthodox, it had nothing to do being against anyone. It's simply that we understand the Bible as given by Christ to the apostles and as lived by the apostles and the saints in the early centuries. Because after many centuries, people start to explain the Bible their way, to understand the Bible their way, not following the old, the old tradition. So many people ignore the existence of the sacraments, ignore the idea of fasting, of uh, continuous repentance, the, pres the idea of priesthood, the idea of intercession. They just denied all these because According to their understanding, they, you know, see nothing in the Bible related to this. But when you go back and um, read or listen to the commentaries of the old fathers of the church, the respected saints of the church, they all agreed upon all these fundamentals in our Orthodox faith. How do I know that God answers my question? Simply, you will feel the answer. When you ask God for something, you will see the, the answer of God. But, you know, the, the Lord taught us to focus on praying for the spiritual things, not for the earthly things. So he, he said that, just ask for the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Anything else will be given to you. So when you pray asking God for forgiveness, for purity, for humility, for wisdom, for the salvation of other people, for the success in your service, so you are just praying for spiritual matters. It goes with the will of God. But when you ask God for very specific things on earth, we have to respect the will of God because he could see the picture in a better way and you may not know the best for you. Uh, how to convince some girl that they cannot attend all functions, especially with school friends. Again and again, we should respect each other. Being a parent or a child, we need to, you know, uh, to know how to communicate in a, in a humble, respectful way, and to listen to each other. 
because parents ha had that logic, had their reasons, and also children, they have their desires and their reasons. And because we love each other, we need to reach together to a, a decision. But we may not just follow our friends and do whatever they do. We are Christian and we are different. We are we having our values. We care for our eternal life much more than we care for enjoying this minute. And because we are Christians, children of God, we definitely have um, different values. Um, and we see things different way. So we may enjoy things. People do not see any joy in these things. Thank you for your time. Any more questions? Go ahead, Habib. Okay, so how would you explain like the Orthodox faith to other denominations like Catholic? Okay. Um, the Catholic Church is definitely an apostolic church. It's a very early traditional church. That's why the differences between the Orthodox family and the Catholic family are considered few, not like the Protestantic denominations and others, because they share most of the basics. They believe in the Holy Trinity, they believe in the divine nature of the Lord, they believe in eternal life, they believe in the holy sacraments, they believe in priesthood, they believe in monastic life, they believe in fasting, they believe in Saint Mary as a great intercessor. So we have we sharing many basics the foundation is more or less the same but again when you study the history you will find out that on the 11th century specifically um, uh, in the year 1054 it happened that the pope of rome added some word to the creed and he was, you know, faced by many uh, accusations and many problems because not us, the Copts, who stood against him, but most of the Western churches at that time were not happy with adding any single word to the creed because it was like an agreement between all the uh, old churches that the creed delivered by the hands of the saints from the fourth century should be respected and no one add or subtract any word uh, uh, unless they have uh, like an international uh, meeting or gathering to study whatever they want to change. So he actually did not stick to the agreement. And since that time from the 11th century, they started to see things differently in many things. So they, some of them believe that after this life, people may have some chance to repent. The idea was never there in Christian worldview, that repentance after this life is not there. The Lord himself taught us differently, that you have, not, you have no other chance but this life, to repent, to choose God, or lose eternity. So they started to add some idea. That's why there was a gap between the two sister churches. Although they were original, they were traditional, they were um, apostolic, but the gap became wider with the, with the years because they added few other, um, you know, beliefs. But definitely we respect them so much because we... we understand that they believe in the Holy Sacrament and they are very close to us. <laughs>